FTSE 250 listed diversified gas and oil. The oil and gas producer in the Appalachian Mountains in the U.S. Uh, has a reported a second consecutive increase in dividend. This is for the third quarter by a margin of 7%. We saw a 7% increase in the second quarter of this year. And uh, it's uh, done this as a result of uh, what's been a good year so far for the company. Rusty Hudson is the chief executive. He joins us now on the line from Birmingham, Alabama. Rusty, it's great to talk to you. It's good to talk about an oil and gas story that's doing well because we hear so much about some of the big, bigger, larger companies that uh, trade out of the States and, of course, in London as well. They're finally going tough. But to come across someone that's doing so well, what's behind the story that you're, you're showing so far this year? Yeah, I think it's, it's a few things. I think, number one, um, our ability to, um, you know, through our Smarter Asset Management Program, um, you know, focus on the operations of existing wells, um, arresting decline rates in the portfolio, keeping a very flat production profile, underpinning not only the, the, the production profile, but also the cash flows of the business, and then using a very, very uh, stringent hedging program uh, to, you know, to, to recognize much better natural gas prices when the commodity price environment has been very, very challenged. Um, now all of that's resulted in a very good uh, first three, three quarters of the year. Yeah, you, you talk in your uh, release about economies of scale that you've been able to benefit from, and clearly uh, this has uh, helped you in delivering shareholder returns. Are you at an optimal point now, or do you see more economies still yet to come through? Clearly, with the dividends being um, pushed up as far as they are, I guess the big question is for the pockets of shareholders, we're going to see more dividend increases this year as a result of more economies of scale coming through, or are we now at peak? Yeah, you know, our <clears throat> our cost structure, I believe, is one of the best in the industry in terms of, of companies that don't drill wells. Uh, we're at $1.18 per MCF equivalency, which, which includes the G&A structure of the business. So even at gas prices in the 250 to 270 range, we still have pretty healthy margins in the business. Um, both of these uh, dividend increases that we've seen over the last two quarters are really a result of the two acquisitions we did in May and the increased EBITDA that came off of both of those, um, I would see us being relatively without another acquisition. You know, the dividend's in a pretty good place right now. And I, I think, uh, you know, 10 and a half, 11 percent dividend yield. So I think probably we're more uh, apt to see, the, you know, hopefully the share price re-rate on the back of these last two increases. What, what about the pipeline? More, more acquisitions are we expecting or are you just going to consolidate what you've got and continue to deliver these sort of returns? Well, it's, it, it's a great question. You know, from our perspective, um, we operate it in a way that, all right, if we do nothing else, here's what we're going to do. And so our business is, is heavily focused right now on integration of those two transactions, continuing to seek additional synergies in the, in the expenses and in the, in the operations on the ground game. Um, but we, we continue to, to uh, evaluate opportunities and uh, there's no shortage of them for sure. Yeah. What are you, um, how, how are you paying for all this? I ask this in the context, of course, of the uh, financial deal you've got with Oak Tree Capital Management. What, what, what's the deal there and, 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 and how are you financing your projects? Because clearly you're getting a lot of cash onto the balance sheet yourself. Yeah. So, you know, up to this point, most of our transactions have been, you know, financed with uh, leverage all, and, and equity, 50-50, uh, you know, split. Our leverage ratio continues to maintain around 2.2 times, which is a great place for us to operate. Um, but the Oak Tree transaction, um, it's not a debt. It's, it's a joint venture. Um, you know, they're going to invest right alongside of us in transactions, dollar for dollar, 50-50. Um, and they're going to promote us on the economics on a going forward basis. Uh, and it'll have a reversion factor. So once they hit a stated internal rate of return on their part, they'll revert 15% of their working interest back over to us. So it's a great deal for our shareholders. They get the, the benefit of the, uh, the promote on the front end, <clears throat> they get the reversion, and then we can buy those assets back from them at any point in the future uh, as a right of first offer. And of course, one of the other things about talking about profile, of course, is the fact that you're now a FTSE 250 listed mid-tier company, which gives you far more uh, profile. What's it like moving from AIM, which is a, a bit of a different sort of feel, isn't it? In terms of management, at least, you uh, are expected to do things slightly differently. Um, what was the idea about moving on to the main market? 
Well, I think it was always our, you know, our goal to get there. I think AIM served a great purpose for us. It helped us to raise capital to grow the company to a point where we could, you know, uplist the company uh, to the premium board. Um, and then the company's just grown substantially over the last four years. I mean, the, the company I took public back in 2017 represents less than 3% of the company today. So we've done a significant amount of acquisitions. We've grown the company substantially. You know, we've got 300 million of EBITDA now. Uh, so it's, it's a large company now uh, and we'll continue to look for growth opportunities moving forward. How do you see the oil and gas business developing over the uh, the forthcoming years? Um, it, of course, it comes as a little bit of a change in uh, the, the politics in the States, but the, about the political um, appetite for oil companies, a lot of emphasis now on finding ways uh, to uh, transition and, and become a more sustainable company. What are you doing in regard to that particularly? Well, I think we've got a great ESG story. I think, you know, when you're 90 some percent natural gas, which we believe will continue to be a carbon fuel that will be used into the future. I mean, I know there's a lot of discussion around, you know, carbon in general, but, you know, especially here in the U.S., I mean, a large percentage of our power generation grid is now, you know, from natural gas. Um, and most of that has moved off of coal to natural gas over the last several years. That's not easily replaced. Um, and so I think natural gas is a great story, will continue to be a great story. It's the greenest carbon fuel that we have, uh, and we're pushing that. And that's what we're, we're making sure our institutional investors understand is, is that we're a natural gas producing company, uh, and we have a, we have a future uh, in, in the, in the uh, energy world going forward. Let me just bring up a, a share price, if we can, and just quickly talk us through what's happening here. Currently around about 112 pence uh, on the FTSE 250. Uh, not as high as we were when, when was that, uh, sort of May last year or so, but nonetheless, uh, a far better improvement. In fact, we've got the highest trade I think we've had uh, since around about the middle of last year uh, recently. What do you say to investors about what's being priced in at these levels in terms of what you're doing at the moment? Yeah, I think, you know, over the last, you, you, you look back to April of last year, the highs, you know, the commodity price environment has just been very, very poor. I mean, oil and natural gas both have been at, a, you know, some all-time lows over the last 12 months. So I think some of the, you know, that has just been lost, you know, that in the commodity price, in the macro. Um, but I think what's happening now is, is that you're seeing people um, invest in stocks that they feel are safe, that they're comfortable with. Um, you know, in our case, a very comfortable dividend, um, which, you know, that has been a lot of companies have been cutting and, and getting rid of their dividends. And so for us to maintain and actually increase in a pretty poor commodity price environment uh, gives people a lot of comfort, a lot of, uh, you know, ability to, to feel very good about investing in our shares. One, one final question has to be about the change in political environment in the States with President-elect uh, Biden. Clearly, Donald Trump is a very big supporter of your sector. Any change in the way that you're going to deal with things? I mean, clearly with a political change, there might be a little bit of a, a, a shift in gear. What do you say to investors about the, uh, the, the way forward from here politically for you? Yeah, I think, you know, I, the, the world is different under President-elect Biden for sure. But I think it's going to be more of an impact on if you're drilling wells and if you're drilling on, you know, government lands, for example. Um, I don't think there's going to be, he doesn't have Congress to work with. I think the, the Senate's going to stay Republican, most likely. Uh, the, the House of Representatives got a lot tighter. They lost a lot of seats. The Democrats did. I think the green energy discussion here in the U.S. has been muted quite, quite a bit through this election. And there's a lot of infighting in the Democratic Party around the green energy and the Green New Deal. Um, so I think that, it, it, you know, it could be a little bit difficult, more difficult from a regulation standpoint for some of the drillers, especially on government lands. But I think it could end up being a positive for pricing going forward as you have less drilling potentially. Um, you could see a positive impact on the price of natural gas and oil. Yeah. Look, it's a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks indeed for your time today. It's great to hear about the story and congratulations on the FTSE 250 listing because clearly it's a seminal moment in the history of the diversified gas and oil. But uh, Rusty, thanks for joining us from Birmingham, Alabama. That's goodness. the chief executive of diversified gas and oil, Rusty Hudson. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.